Well, here we go, my dudes. It is the transfer special that's leading up to the final season here at Crystal Palace. We've got European football coming up, so we've got to add some depth to this team. Let's go ahead and get into it, my dudes. Before we get into today's episode, why don't you go ahead and leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment down below. Well, it is time for a season review where I think you can consider it a pretty successful season here at Crystal Palace. We qualified for what I think is the Europa League. I'm fairly certain it's the Europa League. Uh, finishing sixth in the league, pretty good season for us. We had some new arrivals this offseason. We did add a lot of players. Uh, I'm really shocked. I guess it was just the the... The price of this, but Mavadidi up top signing of the season. He had he, he was absolutely fantastic for us. He was he was arguably our best player at most times this season. Put out a seven point four. Uh, Caligari A minus on that one seven point one two. Moffy C plus seven point eleven. Played a lot for us. Bursic a B plus on that one. I was excited about that deal. Pazlak C plus seven point zero seven. Ballard uh, seven point zero two. Richie six point nine six. Bagan put out a 6.83, uh, got a C overall on that one. Kakarate a B plus, 6.86 on him. And uh, I was really disappointed in Demir. Uh, B minus for him, but I do think we got a really good deal, 6.83. Uh, O'Hara, 6.77. I'd like to give him some more game time next year. Obviously, he, he dealt with some injuries this year, so he wasn't able to play a full season for us. And then we brought in Harvey Elliott on loan midway through the season. And uh, he was okay. It was 6.73. I would like to uh, find another right wing player to use this season because we use Elise as our number 10 so much that, that it's tough really to consider, consider him depth at right wing. Harvey Elliott kind of turned into the backup. Demir was injured a lot. So the right wing was still a pretty big question this season. And I want to get that solved for next season. And as I mentioned, there we go. We finished sixth in the league. The board gave us a C plus for the league. A B minus for the FA Cup and a C plus for the Carabao Cup. I mean, guys, I thought we had a really successful season. I mean, they wanted us to fight, fight against relegation. We get a C plus for qualifying for the Europa League. Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and look at the finances. Uh, sponsorship went up a good bit. Broadcast revenue went down slightly. Corporate and hospitality go up. Competition prize money went up a good bit. Uh, match day red, match day commercial and retail went up as well. Lise, Edward, Mavadidi, Eze, and Richie all being the top selling kits. And this is how we lined up for the season. And I really don't have any arguments with that because, I mean, the only one you could make is the mirror on this right-hand side, but he missed so many games due to injury that it, it was kind of tough to say that, wasn't it? It really was. Moffy up top, that would probably create a little bit of controversy, but – if you look at their overall, well, it doesn't show their, it doesn't show Edward. Uh, if you looked at their overall average rating, Moffy was much better than Edward was this season. So there you go. And there we go. Look at there. My boy Mavaditi just taking all them awards this year. He was fans player of the season, young player of the season, signing of the season, top goal scorer, most player of the match awards, and highest average rating. This is the Mavaditi show this year, baby. Uh, Alize won goal of the year. He had the most assists as well. And Daniel Ballard had the most passes completed per 90 minutes. A couple of record like breakers. A couple of record breakers. Mavaditi with 23 goals for the most overall goal. goals by a player in a season. Mavaditi with the most assists in a season. Uh, Joe Bursick with most shutouts. Mavaditi with most player of the matches. Highest transfer fee ever received was with Zaha. We received 28.7 for that. And youngest goal score, score was Demir. So it was a pretty good season. Looking at our best overall 11, that is what we have right now. It's still showing what we had last season as well as in the tactic. Uh, so it's kind of hard to disagree with some of this stuff. I think you could take Binkovic out of it at this point and put Gahey into that spot, and then the back four would be perfect. And then the midfield's kind of – midfield's always kind of still been – it's still a question mark. I feel like we're pretty solid there, and we won't add a ton of players. But it is kind of odd to see some of how that's lined up, and it's really odd that – Harvey Elliott was our right wing, and Demir is in this. I would think you'd move Elise up there and take Demir out and then put somebody else in the midfield that I'm just I'm struggling to think of right now. Maybe uh, Richie, Kakaret, 
something like that. And I know it's not going to take every player in account from Crystal Palace's history, but but yeah, that's a, that's a bit of an odd one to me. Mavididi on the left, I, I love that. Mafi up top, that one's that one's a bit crazy. I, I, I mean, I'm happy with it though. And then they're delighted with us qualifying for the Euro Cup. Uh, looking at the expectations for next season, they want us to finish mid-table. They want us to get out of the group stage of the Europa League. And they're looking to sell the club. They've been looking to sell the club since we've took over. We almost had it sold this past season at some point. We didn't get it done. And uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're looking to get on out of here. They want us to develop players using the club's youth system, which is it's kind of tough because we don't really have any good youth players. Counterattacking football, sign players to sell for a profit, work within the payroll, minimum of three years for first team players. All pretty average stuff. We'll go back and accept that. Uh, I'll do that off screen. Yep. Rating makes a Brooks offer. Okay. Don't care. And Elise claims the young English players. Wait, back that up. Elise claims English players, young player of the season. Go ahead, give him a pat on the back. Say, hey, good job, bud. You deserve it. And uh, it looks like Eze had third in the goal of the season. But another good thing about us qualifying the Europa League is, where is it? $28.96 million in the bank, baby. Let's go. Help us out. Give us some money, money, money. That's, that helps out a lot. That really does. I'm interested to see what happens with the transfer budget. Hopefully it goes up a little bit because I'd really like to sign a couple of players. We need some We need some depth. We really do. I do want to discuss some other stuff before we get out of this bit, though. It's players that are wanted. Players that are wanted by other clubs. And as you can see, there is some big names out there that are wanted by other clubs. you got regular starters being wanted. Tyreek Mitchell wanted by Tottenham. Boudier is wanted by Southampton. This one is going to be the tough one, though. Elise to PSG. Now, if we take a look at Elise, his uh, average price, not his average price, his price here is 60 mil or 45 to 60 mil. We, we don't sell him unless it's 60 mil to me because he signed through through 2027. He signed a new contract this offseason. If PSG wants him, they're going to have to spend the big money on him. And I, I would take that to help rebuild the squad because it needs more depth. That's what this club needs. We need depth. I think we've got a good solid core of players. We just need to add some uh, some bench players that I feel really comfortable playing. Cantwell, he's wanted by Wolves. I, I would sell Cantwell for the right price. Eze, wanted by Arsenal. Another player that I would potentially sell if the right price is there. 38 mil for 40. Uh, I would like to get that up maybe to 40 mil if Arsenal come in for him. And uh, I, I could see us letting him go, really, just to rebuild the squad. Caligari, he's wanted by... Burnley, they're not going to get him. Joel Bagan, wanted by Bournemouth, they won't get him as well just because I don't think they would really be able to offer what I would want for him, you know, for us to make a profit off of him. But yeah, so we do have players wanted. We're going to be back when we find out what the initial financial board thing, what they give us for our transfer and payroll. That's what I'm trying to say, my dudes. Well, just a couple of clicks later, we find out what the initial payroll and transfer budget is going to be. Uh, we're going with 70 mil for our payroll and 56 for our transfer. It's not a ton, but I do think we definitely can make that work. We can spend some of that money. We won't spend all 56 of that unless, obviously, we sell some players because we don't have that much in the bank. We've got 30 mil in the bank, but I'm definitely not spending the full 56. I just I can't see myself doing that. I really can't. That's that's a bit too much. We're currently spending 63 mil on payroll. We're going to be spending 60 mil at the start of next year, so when our contracts expire. And, uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty good I'm, – I'm happy with that. Like, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we do want to go ahead and take another look at this right here. Not that. Go back here. Uh, we want to look at depth chart because we want to see what we want to do this offseason. I think – I mean, honestly, I think Stryker, we're still fine with Edward Mothy and Mavididi up there. Right-hand side, I mentioned I would like to bring another player in because, well, we play Elise so much in the middle. You know, like, you can't really consider him our starter right there. It's, it's Demir, and then there's no backup behind Demir. So it would be nice to sign somebody. Demir's a squad-level player, so we could honestly bring in a player that's better than him, and he could still be the backup. Like, that, that would be ideally what I think I would like to do, just bring in another player there that can be a starting player. And then the attacking mid, uh, we've got Elise. Eze is kind of the backup there, really, I feel like, after this past season. I know his star rating shows that he should be starting on the left-hand side instead of Mavididi. But Mavididi, well, he was so good that, well, we're giving him the 
it's his job to lose at this point. So Eze being there behind Elise, and then we got O'Hare. So I feel like our number 10 is pretty comfortable. I feel like our left-hand side's even better, really. Eze, Cantwell, Mavaditi, really good players. Happy with those guys. Midfield, uh, we've got Richie, Kakaret, Radovald, and Boudier, don't we? So you could potentially say we need to add another midfield player. It wouldn't hurt to bring in just kind of a – all-round player. Not, not. I'm not saying that we need to bring in another playmaker or another box-to-box. -box, just somebody that can really do it all for us. We just want somebody else in that position. Right back, man. Right back was tough this year, wasn't it? The injuries. Caligari and Pazlak play back there. We've got Gahey. I feel like Gahey's a really good right back for us. Like, I honestly feel. I'm trying to get back to the screen. I feel like, and I know I'm gonna get some flight for this, but. I feel like he's just as good of a right back as he is a center back for us. So I really expect him to be a backup at that position for us next season, as well as being a backup center back. I would like for him to be to transition to a, more of a squad level player for us and bring in a really good player that's good in the air at center back. And then we would be pretty good at center back as well. You know, left back, we got Mitchell, we got Joel Bagan. Uh, you could argue we could bring somebody in on the loan maybe. But this area right here, it's going to be a bit interesting because Matthew's contract expires at the end of the season. We're going to be left with one goalkeeper, Bursic, so we are going to have to sign a backup. And uh, I looked at our under-23 side, and, I mean, you could say we could call it, well, no, he's his, Butlin's contract's expiring, Brack. You knew that. Uh, looking at this, I mean, you say we could bring up somebody from here as a third choice, but, man, I like how he's wanting a new contract to, to – no, bud, get out of here. We'll, we'll probably bring in two goalkeepers. Just, you know, a depth piece and then somebody I feel that's I feel comfortable playing behind Bursic as a backup just in case shit hits the fan like it did at KV Mecklen. You know, we don't want to – we don't want to get caught like we did there with ha actually having a good backup goalkeep. That was uh, that was a bit rough. It really was. I, I'm not sure. There was something else I actually wanted to look at. And I keep forgetting what it is. What was it? Like, I, I'm, I'm really confused. There was something I wanted to discuss with you guys. But I, I really don't know what it is. I really would like to get this stuff upgraded, but I'm not going to worry about it with it being the end of the save. Uh, I've tried in the past, and they was just like, we're good. Keep doing what you're doing. They don't want to put any money in it. They're, they're trying to sell the club. They don't want to keep investing in the club. But yeah, uh, I, I'm sure I'll remember... I just remembered. You guys don't even know who got relegated. So uh, Liverpool won the league. It was followed up by Arsenal, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, then us. But then the relegation. The relegation, one of these teams is a bit interesting to me. West Ham got relegated. Alongside Brighton and West Brom, we're currently scouting all the players. Obviously, I would love to bring Declan Rice in. But uh, he didn't want to join the club. So, And I'm not going to spend that money. Like, I was like, maybe he has, like, a relegation release clause. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be that would be nice. He he doesn't. So that kind of sucks. But there is some players that, that I am scouting there that I am interested in bringing into the club if we can if we can work it out. Just It's, the, it, it's crazy because, like, they're still going to want a ton of money for these players, and, and I just don't have a ton of money to, to spend. And, uh, yeah, it's – It'll be interesting, isn't it? We got a fun, fun transfer window lined up, though. So let's take a break and get back. To cut this part. Well, we have added some players that just haven't went through quite yet, but I did want to show you guys something. Uh, I noticed this last season in the transfer special, but I didn't show it on the screen because, well, it really didn't pertain to us. But the Premier League signings of the season has came in, and hey, look who's sitting up there at the top. It's Mava Eighty. I knew it was a good signing, my dudes. Come on now. I thought that was really good. Uh, the board, we're also adding the number on uh, some more recruitment analysts. Not really, don't really care about that, to be honest with you, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not arguing. It's one more season left in the, in the save. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's good news. We've got some stuff happening in the staffing as well. Uh, got to add some scouts. We've lost some this offseason. I would really – Really like to add some coaching as well. Um, it looks like we can actually do that now that we've got an open spot. Uh, I'm looking at it, and I guess we need a goalkeeper coach, really. Uh, we'll go ahead and place an advert for that. 
go ahead and get one of those in. Hopefully we can find somebody pretty good. Our staffing has been pretty poor since we've got here and uh, we, we really hadn't messed with it that much. So maybe, maybe that'll help out a little bit, but let's go ahead and take a look at the people that have joined the club so far. Uh, I think it might be here. So there's part of this guy's game that I really like. Part of it I don't. And I think you'll pick out why I like him. We've signed Marsha Kumbula from Ro Roma for 13 mil. Paid a little bit of money for him, but I am excited about him. He's a center back option. And as you guys can see, he's really good in there. He's a three-star player, four-star potential. I think he's going to slot in as a center back for us right off the get-go. Really, really good in the air. He's just a tiny bit slow, but he does have good pace. So kind of interesting about him. Uh, I'm excited to sign him. As you can see, he's already... We've already listed him as at 43 mil, so so that's a pretty good signing for us. Looking at future transfers, we've got a goal keep coming in that I'm actually excited about that we signed for a free. Uh, Pena from Barcelona, three-star player, four-star potential. I think he's going to be a solid backup. May even get some starts in some of the cup, cup competitions for us, and I think that'll be a really good signing for us when it comes through. And then I'm looking at adding another left back, uh, Loren, Loris Benito from Porto. That kind of rhymed, didn't it? Looking at signing him, just a depth piece. He'll probably move in as our second choice left back. Uh, looks pretty good. He played a little bit last year in the league. He hasn't played in a while, but I do think he'll be pretty good for us. Just as, a, as an option there for us. I, I'm still debating on trying to sign a center mid. The issue is, is I just don't want to sign anybody to come above these well, Richie and Kakaret, I really don't want him to go above them or Boudier even. I think if we sign one, it'll be more of the, the ball-winning midfield type player. Uh, I think that'll probably be the best overall move that we can do because we really uh, – we don't have like a playmaking midfield that we use. Belize can do that if we need him to, but uh, I mean, Richie can as well. Richie's – Richie's a really solid player. He's he's developing nicely. So I'm thinking something along the lines of a box to box that can play as a ball winning midfielder or a ball winning midfielder that can play as a box to box. I'm just not 100% sure really on that. I feel like I signed a right wing as well that just I haven't seen. Where are you at, sir? I feel like there's one that we're trying to sign. It is. He's waiting on a work permit. It's Omir Atazili, Atazili uh, Israeli and born. Uh, Right wing option for us. He's a four-star player, four-star potential. He's a little bit older, but I do think he'll definitely come in and probably be the starting right wing over Demir. I think it's an upgrade right there at that position for us, and it'll be nice. The, the work permit should come in pretty soon, so we should be able to get him into the club, and he will line, in, line up on that right-hand side for us. And it just frees up Elise to play mainly in the center now, and, and it uh, hopefully it'll give him a little bit of a break, really, because – Dude has played a lot of ball for us there, and I think it's I think it's a good a good move. We haven't spent a ton this season like we did last year. Obviously, the big one was the uh, Kumbala kid. I think I think he'll be a good player for us. We've got some more money that we can work with. I just don't. I mean, you could argue that we need to bring in a better striker, but I'm happy with Edward and Moffy. Really, I think they're good enough. If we hold on to Elise, we've had a couple offers for him that he wasn't really interested in going to, so that's been good news. We could honestly add a number 10 as a backup to him. I know we have uh, Callum O'Hare, but maybe a little a guy that's a little bit more consistent at that spot. That would be nice. That maybe could play in the midfield as well. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're looking good, though. I wouldn't mind signing another goalkeeper, to be honest with you guys, besides the one that we've signed already. But, yeah, I mean, the squad, it's already coming together pretty nicely, I feel like, compared to what it was last season. We're not losing many people Looking at our expiring contracts, uh, let's go ahead and look at that. I think most of them's already left. Uh, we've only we're only losing Butland and Harvey Elliott, so yeah, not a lot of lot. I mean, like unless we sell a lot of people, I don't see us like having to do a ton of work because we've got a solid foundation here, and we're adding some depth pieces that's really going to help out the club and hopefully get us pretty far in the Europa League. Well, my dudes, the season is upon us which means we've ran out of time for this transfer special. We've signed one more player that really adds to our midfield. He's not a great player by any means, but I like him. I think he's going to be a really solid depth piece, and he could potentially start for us at times as a box-to-box -box midfield player. And uh, I will go ahead and show him to you now. Lewis O'Brien, we signed for Huntersfield for 10 mil. Uh, just got him to a new contract. I think he's going to be a solid player. 
like I mentioned, box to box is what he will mainly be for us. He's pretty good at finishing. His his tackling's a little bit lower than what I would like, but but it's okay. It'll work. His work rate's okay. Teamwork's pretty good. He's just, like I said, he's a solid depth piece. We signed him as a squad player, and that is what he is the definition of. I think he'll do a good job, though. Last year playing in the championship, uh, put out a 7.03. The year before that, putting out a 7.03, playing in all the matches. So he's he's got a lot of game time. He's ready to make the step up, and I, I'm ready to see how this kid does. I think he's going to be a pretty good player for us. I just, I'm not sure where he ranks in terms of our players because like Boudier, for example, let's take a look at Boudier. He's kind of the one odd player. You know, we signed him as an advanced playmaker because that's what we was using at the time. Well, we really don't use that much anymore. So he's kind of the outlier of the group. He can definitely do the box to box. He's a two and a half star at it, but he's he's really good. So like Boudier, I apologize. I, I think what it'll be will be Richie, Boudier, and Lewis O'Brien. That'll be those guys. And I think at ball winning midfields, I think what we'll have is uh, Kakaret. Because, I mean, Kakaret's a really good ball winning midfield. If anything, that's that's what he is. He's actually good at. He's a ball winning midfielder. And then I think Radevald after that will be our next ball winning midfield player. And then, I mean, you could say at that point, Lewis O'Brien. He's another one that can play that role for us, I believe. Yeah, there it is. He can play that role for us. He's not great at marking. I would like to see his marking up just a little bit. We may try training him on that, but I do believe that as a third-choice ball-winning midfield, he'll do a damn good job there. I think we've added a lot to the team this year. We're, we're, we're still not ranked super, super, super high in the uh, season preview, but we are looking a little bit better. Let's take a look at that. Uh, we're like 13th. Yeah, 13th. So they want us to finish mid-table. I mean, I think... You know, last year we we over exceeded what we were supposed to. I think we can do that this year, get upper mid table, and I honestly will be happy with that. This season, though, what we're doing, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to focus on the Europa League mainly. Don't we are going to play league matches? So like tomorrow's episode will be the start of the season, but after that, I think we focus on the Europa League. We've seen this season. We want to kind of expedite this last season here at Crystal Palace. And the main reason why we're having this is so we can have a look at the Europa League. You know, we want to have a look at the international competitions. And that's that's what this last season is about. So we're going to play those matches. I think we'll play all of them and uh, see how it goes. I think we'll be okay. I really do. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I think I think the squad looks pretty deep at this point. I would have liked to add another goalkeeper. Not spend. I wouldn't. I don't want to spend hardly any money on it. You know, I don't, I don't want to do that. And I don't think it would hurt to add another striker. I don't know how good of one, you know, if we get another squad level player or another guy that can kind of combat with these two guys here. But I think the squad looks pretty good, really, because, you know, striker, we mentioned, we got Edward, we got Moffy, Mavaditi can play there as well. Right hand side, we got Ad. 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 Zilly. Ad. Zilly. Ad. Zilly. We got Zilly. That's what we're going to call him. We got Zilly. We got Demir. And, uh, Elise can play there, obviously. I mean, that's he can he's he's the top person there, but but he plays as our number ten. So uh, number ten, we got Elise, we've got Eze, and we've got Calamo here. So number ten looks pretty good as well. Left hand side, Eze and uh, Mavididi and Cantwell. So Mavididi will have the starting role. I know Eze's ranked a little bit higher, but Mavididi was so good last year; it's hard to just kind of cast him to the side. The midfield we've done discussed it. I think it's I think it's really fine. Right back we look pretty good, don't we? We got Caligari, we got Gahey now, who's who's trained over there. He's competent now over there. Actually, when you click on him, that's where it shows that he should be playing. So that's good news. He can be a backup there for us alongside Pazlak in the center back situation. We got Anderson, we got Kumbula, we got Gahey, we've got uh, the kid, the other kid we signed, Ballard, who's actually jumped up to a three star player, I believe. It's not on this screen, but he is on this screen. So he's a three-star player there. So that's it's pretty good at center back. I'm happy with that. Left back, we got Tyreek Mitchell. We got uh, Benito. He did sign with us. And then we've got Ryder Vulcan play there. So I think the squad looks pretty good, my dudes. I'm really excited about what this next season has entailed for us. And it starts tomorrow. Well, there we go, my dudes. Our second transfer special on FM22 is now done. I think it was a pretty good one. I really enjoyed the players that we brought in. I think we've added a lot of depth to the side. And that ultimately, I think, really hurt us last year is just that we didn't have that. So 
Maybe this season's a little bit better. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment down below. And as always, my dudes, thank you for watching.